Hi, welcome to this Corporate Mads video on bank statements. In this video, we're going to look at what a bank statement is, some of the keywords you might encounter whenever you're reading a bank statement, and how to answer some questions on them. So here we've got the beginning of a bank statement, an example of the beginning of a bank statement, and we've got five columns, date, description, credit, debit, and balance. And the credit, debit, and balance all have the pound sign in it, so I send that any of the numbers below in those columns are all in pounds. Okay, so we've got date, and we have got the 5th of May, and on the 5th of May, the description says start and balance. So that means the balance of the bank account at the beginning of this statement. So it means that on the 5th of May, there's £40 in the bank account. Then on the 6th of May, the description says salary, and there's a credit for £250 and 10 pence. And credit means that money has been put into the bank account, money has been credited to the bank account. And it's £250 and 10 pence. So that's how much the salary was, and that's been added into the bank account. Now remember those are already £40 in the bank, so whenever the other £250 and 10 pence has been put in, if we add that onto the £40, that gives a balance in the bank account of £290 and 10 pence. So on the 6th of May, there was £290 and 10 pence. Now the next activity in the bank account is on the 8th of May and there's a description that says electricity bill and there's a debit. Now debit means that money has been taken out of the bank account and obviously for an electricity bill you're going to be paying it so you're going to be taking money out of the bank account and giving it to your electricity company and the debit was for £50 and 2 pence. So that means that £50 and 2 pence has come out on the 8th of May. So there was £290 and 10 pence in the bank and if we take the £50 and 2 pence out of the bank then there would be £240 and 8 pence left in the bank. And that's it. So this is an example of a bank statement. We have got our date, description, credit. That's money being put into the bank account. So that could be your salary, wages, refunds, any money that people have transferred you, maybe for a birthday or maybe money that they've owed you. Then you've got debit. That's money that's been taken out of the bank account. So it could be whenever you're paying bills or buying something in a shop or a regular payment, perhaps a gym membership or... Um, something like that or you know payments towards a car and then we've got balance and balance is how much money is in that account at that particular time okay let's have a look at two typical questions so here we've got our first question and this is going to be a calculator question so we're going to use a calculator whenever we're answering this question and then our next question will be a non-calculator question so here we've got a bank statement and it says complete the bank statement and as you can see we've got date the 1st of December, start and balance. So on the 1st of December, the start and balance is £351.92. Then on the 2nd of December, there's a vet bill. So there's money that's been paid to the vet, so that's a debit, so that's money going to the vet, of £23. So we've got a blank here for balance, and that means we need to work out how much money will be in the account after the £23 has been paid to the vet. So if we take our calculator, and if we write 351 0.92 subtract 23 pound you can put the point zero zero in if you want or you could just write minus 23 equals 328 pound and 92 pence so we're going to write that in here in the balance here on the 2nd of december so 328 pound and 92 pence and we don't need to write the pound sign in because we know that all these values are in pounds anyway Okay, now on the 2nd of December, there's another activity in the bank account, and there's wages. So that's money that's been paid into the bank account, and the wages were for £748.23. And pence. So that means that £748.23 and pence has been paid into the bank account. So that means we're going to need to add it on to our £328.92. And so whenever there's a credit, we add that on. And so whenever we add that on, we will find, well, we take our 328 and 92 pence, we add on 748 pound and 23 pence, and we get 1,077 pounds and 15 pence. So 1077.15. Okay, now the 3rd of December, we've then got gym membership and a debit. So obviously there's a, a regular payment to a gym for the gym membership, perhaps it's monthly, for £19.99. And that's a debit, so we're going to take that away. So we're going to take it away from the £1,077.15. And when we do that, and again, it's a calculator question, so when we type that and we work that out, we get that that's equal to £1,057.16. And finally, we've then got on the 5th of December a card payment. And we've got, as you can see here, the credit is greyed out, so it's not a credit, it's a debit. 
So we've got a debit here. And then we've been told the balance after that payment's been made. So we know that there was £1,057.16. pence. There's a certain payment. And then afterwards, there's £857.45p left in the bank account. So if we work out the difference between these two numbers, we can then work out what was subtracted to leave the £857.45. pence. And when we do that, we get... That's £199.71. So we then write that in, £199.71. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. And this question is going to be a non-calculated question, so we're going to work these out ourselves. So we've got complete the bank statement, and we've got date 15th of June, start and balance, and that's blank, so we're going to have to work that out. Then on the 17th of June, there's a refund for £30. And then that leaves us a balance of £55. Okay, now as you can see here, the refund is a credit. That's money being, that's been put into the bank account. So that must mean that if we had our balance and we've added on £30 and we've now got £55, that must mean there was £25 in the bank account before the £30 was put in to give us our £55. Okay, on the 19th of June, it then says petrol station and debit, so that's a payment to the petrol station, perhaps for petrol, for £60. Now what's interesting here is, the person only has £55 in the bank. Now, depending on what type of bank account and what type of agreement you have with the bank, there might be two different things that might happen here. One is you go to the petrol station and you try to pay for your £60 of petrol. And if you've got a bank account that doesn't have an overdraft, you might find that you go to pay for that £60 and it just says payment declined and then the petrol station will be looking for their money from you. Um, you might have to leave them your your driving license or you might have to sort of find a way to get that money to them and um, alternatively if you've got an overdraft okay that means that you are allowed to spend slightly more than what money you've got in the bank account and that means that you owe the bank some money so if there's 55 pound in the bank account and you spend 60 pound well you do 55 take away 60 and that leaves you with negative five or minus five so that means there's minus five pound in the bank what that really means is you owe the bank five pound so the balance will be minus five pounds okay that means you are overdrawn if you go below zero you're overdrawn and that means you owe the bank some money and if you go overdrawn you're in what they call your overdraft and that means that you owe the bank some money you've overdrafted you've taken out more money than you've got and what that means is the next time some money's put into the bank obviously they're going to take the five pound and they're going to leave you what's left okay so on the 20th of june some wages have been paid into the bank for 329 pound that's fortunate <laughs> okay so the bank account did say minus five pound and then we've added in 329 pounds now, if you take our minus 5 and we add on 329, that will leave you with 324. Because you add 5 to get to 0, and then that leaves you with 324 left. So that's 324 pounds in the bank. And then finally, it says bonus, perhaps for their job. They've done such an amazing job, they're going to get a bonus. And it then it doesn't tell you what the credit's for. As you can see, the debit is grayed out. That means that it's not a debit, it's a credit. It's money that's been paid into the bank account, and that makes sense for a bonus. And as you can see, after that's happened, there's £401.76 in the bank. So if we work out the difference between the £324 and the £401.76, we can see how much the bonus was for. So let's take our £401.76 and subtract our £324.0. So 6 take away 0 is 6. 7 take away 0 is 7. 1 take away 4, well, we're going to need to borrow, and it's a 0, so we're going to borrow from the 4, call it a 3 and a 10. Borrow again, so that's now a 9 and a 1. So we've got 11, take away 4, which is 7. 9, take away 2, which is 7. And 3, take away 3, which is 0. So the credit, the bonus, was for £77.76. And, and that's it. So whenever you're reading a bank statement, there will typically be five columns or the you know at least five columns and it will say date so the date of the activity there'll be a description perhaps they'll then say credit or debit now you might see sometimes on a bank account it might say money paid in or money in and money out but the proper terms for it would be credit and debit credit is money that's been put into the bank account debit is money that's been taken out of the bank account and then there's the balance and then that's it really